What's going on, everyone? Henry Kaminsky here, the brand doctor, with another daily gem for you guys. We are going to continue our conversation about how there's nothing passive about branding. That's this week's topic. And we're on, we're on the, a different machine today because I'm going to do some screen sharing and I want to really hammer down uh, today's daily gem, which is what is a integrated brand? So I'm going to share screens real quick and kind of walk you through the process. But before that, I want to ask you, what is an integrated brand? Do you know what that means? Because I will tell you this, the heavy hitters, the big brands are using this very powerful technique, and there's no reason why you can't use it either, okay? But the problem is most companies don't know what an integrated brand is, but don't worry, the brand doctors here, we're gonna break it down for you real simple, and by the end of this video, you're really gonna understand what an integrated, what an integrated brand is and how important it is to uh, become one if you, wanna, if you wanna play hard. So let me share screens real quick. And I wanna show you a couple things, okay? Um, let's take Apple, for example. And I know Apple gets used a lot in examples, but there's a reason for it. So I wanna walk you through a bunch of products of theirs. So let's take a look at the iPhone. Let's take a look at the iPad. Let's take a look at the MacBook Air, okay? Let's take it a step further. Let's look at the Apple website. The iPhone X is sick. But, so this is the Apple website, okay? Let's go a step further. Let's look at the packaging of the new iPhone. The packaging is so crazy that it actually showed up in one of my colleagues' feed today from somebody who just purchased it. The package was so wowed, had such a wow factor that he actually shared it. So the packaging is actually share worthy. It was funny because he had just texted me and he said, look at this, look at what just showed up in my feed. We were just talking about this yesterday and I was like, exactly. I mean, this is powerful stuff. So moving it a step further, let's take a peek at the Apple Store, okay? Very clean. Normally, it doesn't look this empty. Every time I go past the Apple Store, there's like a gazillion people in it. But so anyway, take a look at the Apple Store. And then, okay, so here's the packaging again. Whoops, that was a double. Oops. All right, so did you notice anything special? I actually wish I had one of my Apple receipts to kind of hammer this point home a little bit harder, but I can't find it. So anyway, um, are you starting to get an idea here? And if you don't, let me share it with you. Their Apple is phenomenally good at creating and maintaining a consistent theme, okay? Home today is this. An integrated brand is one where the products, the services, the images, the messaging, they're all tied together and connect with a desired audience. And you heard me say this a thousand times, but a great brand stays narrow and it stays consistent. And yesterday I talked about how you wouldn't want your dentist doing heart surgery on you as well as your hairdresser rebuilding the motor in your car. Now, I know these are extreme examples, but most entrepreneurs fight the specialization part of branding. Oh, let me move this over. Um, and that's a huge problem. All right, so first, there's a couple of things I wanna hammer in. There's a couple of things you have to get clear when it comes to building your brand. One is, what does your brand do 
and who does it do it for? Okay, this is the foundational stuff. If you want to build this castle, right, you got to start with a strong foundation. The second thing is understanding your touch points. Now, I'm going to dive into touch points kind of deep. So pay attention. So what is a touch point? It's very simple. Anytime you can connect or have contact with your audience, that's a touch point. So anything the customer hears, reads, sees, holds, feels, that's a touch point. So you think, think five senses, okay? Think five senses. And any way you can communicate with your audience through the five senses, that would be a touch point, okay? So you're touching their minds, you're touching their hearts, you're touching their ears, their eyes, all of that, okay? That's a touch point. So let's get back to the Apple example, right? So let me go back to share and screen and walk you through the images again, okay? What are the three words that come to mind when you look at these examples? The packaging, the store, all that stuff. Well, what comes to mind for me is three words. Clean, sleek, and sharp. So do you see that pattern in their packaging, in their products, in their website, all of it? That's the importance of hitting those touch points. And they're really, Apple's really, really good at this. Everything is extremely consistent. So every single touch point is communicating the same thing. That, my friends, is an integrated brand. They're super clear with their messaging and they know exactly what they're communicating and they use every single touch point to do it, okay? That's an integrated brand. So here's what I want you guys to do today. One, I want you to get clear with your brand identity, all right? Know what you stand for. If you stand for high quality, then you need to express high quality in every single touch point, okay? So I have a couple clients I have a big dog carpenter. He does high-end carpentry in the Hamptons, right? And I have another client that owns about a dozen or so pest control companies, okay? So the one guy deals with really, really high-end, super wealthy people in the Hamptons, and the other guy handles clients that simply want their houses clean and rid of bugs. Two different, you know, clientele right there okay but the takeaway is this I, I, and i will say that they both do very very well for themselves but the takeaway is this two different business models two different brand messages and touch points okay so when we did a touch point review for both of these clients we discovered that they were only using about 10 percent of their touch point availability and I know it's a sin for me to, to hear that and see that, but it's pretty normal. Most business owners are not capitalizing on the opportunities of these touch points that I've been, that I'm talking about today. So um, most entrepreneurs, most business owners, they're not looking at their, they're not paying attention to their email signatures. They're not paying attention to the invoices that they send out. They're not paying attention to the promotional gifts that they could potentially be uh, utilizing and leveraging. They're not paying attention to their packaging as, as, as tightly and as um, laser focused as I am. And I get it because most entrepreneurs and business owners, they're not branding experts. They're not, they don't have that expertise. And I'm very empathetic to that. So, you know, for our high-end carpenter, when we realized that he wasn't using his touch points as efficiently, we got in to helping him create some of that. So we said to him, like, so what are you doing when you go out for bids? You know, what do you have to give them? Well, I have, you know, a checklist and this and that. And it looks very corporate and it's, it's not even corporate, but it looked like a sheet of paper, right? And I said, okay, that's cool. But it's not 
empowering them or showcasing your expertise or your brand in any way. So what we did was we developed a very beautifully designed presentation folder to leave behind. So after he goes to a consultation, he has all of that form formality paper and all of that inside of this beautifully designed presentation folder. What is this? It's a touch point, okay? For the pest control client, we realized that when he was going out uh, to do bids that he really didn't have anything um, exciting to give them other than a sheet of paper with a price on it and the deliverables. And I said, why don't we spend a couple hundred dollars? So we spent like 500 bucks and we got these die cut magnets made, right? So every time he has his team go out and uh, bid a project, I coached them on how to train them to leave this magnet behind. What is this? It's a touch point, okay? So what did it cost? $50 in labor to get that bid out to that potential client. You know, so it cost about a dollar for these magnets. So we upped the, the, the bid budget to a dollar and, you know, 60% of the bids now that he goes out for, he closes, right? So that's what I'm talking about when it comes to touch points and how important they are, okay? The other thing we did for them is help them with their um, text message marketing. So he, what was happening was when he was booking the consults, he was having like a lot of no-show rates, right? His no-show rates were high. So we helped them do some, some text message marketing to kind of help them solidify and follow up before the consultation. And what did that do? It, it decreased the no-shows. So that was extremely helpful. So now it's hard to tell what makes a difference because you know, we've helped these two clients in so many ways. It's tough to tell the difference what actually helped them grow their business. However, by helping them become a more integrated brand and help them increase their touch points, their business is growing exponentially. So here's today's prescription from the brand doctor, guys. I want you to do one thing. I want you to de define your touch points. Where and how does your brand connect with your audience? Pay attention to the details. I'm not just talking about online, offline. That's very high level. I'm going seven layers deep, defining your touch points. Be specific, okay? That's it. That's all I want you to do today, okay? Make a list because we're going to talk tomorrow about what to do with them. But today, that's all I want you to do is define your touch points. So you may not have packaging and that's fine, but it's however you interact with your clients that's going to be unique to your business. That's what we want to look at today. Okay, so make that list of brand touch points. Understand that a integrated brand is extremely consistent across the board, okay, in all of the above, messaging, tonality, imagery, all of it, okay? So don't worry if you're only using a couple touch points as well. The brand doctor is going to help you over the next couple of days to fix that, okay? So remember, a fully integrated brand uses as many touch points as possible and stays 100% consistent across every, um, across the board, right? So there you have it, guys. Today's Daily Gem. What is an integrated brand? Now you know. Now you know what touch points are. You can see by the example of Apple on how they nail this consistently day in and day out. And it's a very powerful technique that you could be using every day. But if you're not aware of it, you don't know. Okay? So hope you enjoyed today's live. If you found it valuable, please share it with friends and colleagues. Drop me some comments. If you have questions, I'm here for you. So have an awesome day, guys, and uh, I'll catch you on tomorrow's live.